At an assembly of the United Nations, the American representative approved a new state. This government has been informed that a Jewish state has been proclaimed in Palestine and recognition has been requested by the provisional government thereof. The United States recognizes the provisional government as the de facto authority of the new state of Israel. From the ports of Palestine, the last British troops were trickling out, unit by unit. The British soldier had spent 25 years performing a thankless, dangerous task. Now Britain's mandate was over. In Cyprus, contingents of Jews embarked for Palestine. The ban on immigration was no more. After 2,000 years, it seemed a golden dream had at last come true. The wanderers were free to enter their ancient home. With eager gaze, the voyagers looked ahead to Palestine, the promised land. In settlements scattered from the Dead Sea to the Cedars of Lebanon, the Jews labored in the fields. But as they labored, they carried arms. In the barns, they stored not only plowshares, but the weapons of war. In the arid soil, they dug now not furrows, but slit trenches. For Palestine promised anything but peace. The Jews prepared, and the Arabs watched. The air was full of events to come, and come they did. United Nations intervened. To the battleground came an experienced mediator between warring states, Count Bernadotte. His mission, to arrange a truce. Both sides swore it could not be, then finally agreed. In Palestine, the fighting stopped. Was it lasting peace or a pause for breath? At The Hague, the Congress of Europe was attended by representatives from 16 states. In a restless continent, they were drawn together by a common desire for lasting peace. The Congress convened in the Hall of Knights. Here, where Winston Churchill now trod, Seiss Inkwart had been proclaimed Nazi protector of Holland. Here, those who had banished what he stood for made their impassioned pleas. In pleine conscience, mais aussi en toute confiance, on fait le sacrifice de leur vie. With the memory of many things, Mr. Churchill outlined the purpose of the Congress. This is not a movement of parties, but a movement of people. It must be all for all. Europe can only be united by the heartfelt wish and vehement expression of the great majority of all the peoples in all the parties, in all the freedom-loving countries, no matter where they dwell or how they vote. In the battered towns of Europe, they could but wish for peace. For a reminder of its grim alternative lay on every side. In Europe, too, 
Was it peace or but a pause for breath? Thank you.